So today we are going to discuss about debugging with Cypress more like a developer. So we have not discussed about debugging with Cypress ever in our course and today we are going to be talking about that. So I have seen a lot of comments coming from students like you that how we can debug with Cypress and what is the real power of Cypress with the debugging. So we have already talked about debugging a little bit that by default Cypress playground returns you a lot of assertions and it returns what is the actual behavior or the output of the UI is actually happening within the playground as a label. But if you want to really debug the application or if you want to put a breakpoint and see what is the actual behavior of an application during that particular point, you can do that using what is called as Cypress debugging. So with your Cypress test core runs in the same run loop as your application. This means you have access to the code running on the page as well as the things the browser makes available to you like document, windows and of course the debugger. So basically the debugger here means the debugger which is used to debug the JavaScript of an application in the Chrome browser. So that's exactly the keyword that we'll be using for our debugging purpose here. So basically we can use the debugger line in our test code something like this. As you can see, we can just call the debugger within our code and then we can run the test for us. And in the Cypress documentation, it has been mentioned that you should not use the debugger something like this because what happens is basically Cypress runs in a run loop and it stores everything in a queue and then it performs the action. So if you kind of use this debugger something like this, sometimes the debugger point is not hit. So again, that really makes sense. So you try to avoid this particular debugger here and make use of this debugger within your application, which makes things more easier. That's what is mentioned within the Cypress documentation. But fortunately, this debugger line is also valid. You can still use that within your code, something like this, so that the debugger point will be hit and you can verify the UI's behavior or the functionality during that runtime of your test. So this is one line that you can use. The debugger is a raw debugger keyword that is used in the JavaScript, which is used exactly by developers to debug their application. You can use this or as a shorthand, you can also use something like this. So there is a debug method that you can use to perform the same debug operation that you can within the debugger keyword. And if you want to use the debugger within your application code, you can use something like this as well. So you can put this particular debugger line over here within your code, and then you can see what's really happening within your application. We are going to be using a different application this time for this demo. So we are going to be using the Angular application that we developed in our protractor course uh, of the automation testing that we discussed earlier. So this is exactly the same application that you'll be grabbing from the GitHub and then we'll be using that over here, right? So let's quickly see everything in action and understand how things work. So for that, I'm gonna flip to my iTerm terminal to grab the EA course app. All right, so now I'm just gonna open the uh, MKDIR. So I'm just gonna create an EA app and then I'm just gonna navigate to the EA app and within here, I'm just gonna do a good clone of the this URL basically so I'm just gonna call this guy so if you go over here to the EA, EA app uh, EA course app here you can see this is the exact same app the EA course app in the github so we are going to be using this particular application so I'm just gonna clone this particular guy over here and I'm gonna hit enter so you can see that the EA course app has been cloned and then I'm just gonna do an ls. So this is the year course app. So I'm just gonna navigate over there. And then I'm just gonna do an npm install so that it's gonna install all the dependencies for me within the particular application, right? Once this is done, uh, I can start running the application so I can quickly show you how it looks like. I'm just gonna do an npm start and you can see that the application is kind of running if I'm not wrong localhost 80 yep so it seems like the application is currently uh, up and running so it is working for us right now which is cool right so i'm just gonna close this guy over here and let me open the item terminal and let me stop this guy and also 
I'm gonna uh, install the Cypress over here, right? So I'm just gonna do an npm install because this is application has nothing. So if I just open this in Visual Studio Code, I can quickly show you how it looks like. Let me close this test. You can see this is the only application it has got. So we don't really have a Cypress. So basically we need to have Cypress over here so that I can run the test within it. So this is the dependencies I have got this time, but I don't really have Cypress here. So for that reason, I'm gonna be installing the Cypress. So npm install uh, hyphen hyphen save hyphen dev of Cypress. So this will install Cypress for me within our uh, within our project within this particular uh, code here. All right. So you can see that the Cypress has been added, and then I also need to have the Cypress folder created for us. So for that, I'm just gonna do as npx cypress open. So this way it will create a cypress folder for us over here, right? As you can see, it is still creating. So it has been created. As you can see, the cypress folder has been there, it's created for us. I'm just gonna close this guy. And now I'm just going to run the test and see what's really gonna happen. So for running the test, basically, uh, as you can see, the application that we have is a little bit different than what we have been testing all these days. So, for instance, if I just open uh, the, or if I run the application once again on a Chrome browser, so it's gonna be localhost 8080. So you can see that we have like uh, four courses here, like Selenium Framework Development, Coda UI Test Framework Development, Docker on Windows, and Android Automation here. So let's say if I want to test all the cards of the application and I want to see if uh, it has a length of, let's say four, right? So if I want to do that, uh, basically I can write a code which is gonna be pretty easier and very, very straightforward that we were doing all these days. So I'm just gonna do, go to the integration and I'm gonna create a new file and let's call this as EA cores.spec.js so I'm going to write a code something like this so as you can see uh, the code is very very straightforward and simple I all I have did is I just created a describe block for running uh, for visiting within this particular local host of 80 uh, 8808 and then I'm going to test all the cards so basically I'm going to see uh, if my card has a length of 4 in there Right, I'm just gonna save this guy and now if I try to uh, run this particular test so I'm just gonna go over here so why not just use the internal terminal this time so I'm just gonna do a toggle integrator terminal and npx cypress run hyphen hyphen spec uh, which is gonna be this guy so I'm just gonna copy the path over here and I'm gonna hit enter so if I do this what happens is it is gonna test uh, and see if it has the length of 4 in there so it's gonna verify and you can see that the test has got passed which is cool right which is running and now let's say if I want to change the uh, length to let's say 5 and if I want to test this so basically it is gonna fail, right? Because the length is actually not five, the length is actually four, and the test is gonna fail. So if I run this EA core zap, you can see the assertion is gonna basically fail because uh, we expect it to be five, but we, it has got four in there. So now if I want to debug this scenario and I want to see that is it really running or not. So if I want to do that, all I can do is I can select this developer tool and go to the toggle developer tool option here so you can see that this guy comes in right this is exactly the same developer tool that we can see within our chrome browser basically and now if i just go back to my code here and if i add a line called debugger and now we can see that the debugger point has been hit here after the be visible option here Right? But what happens is you don't really get any context here. So once you get the debugger, you don't really get the context of the do or something like that. So for instance, if I put a do here, you can see that do throws you an 
exception something like this because you don't really see any due loaded here by the time you want to test it so you want to use this particular debugger line in the place that you really want to test something like that so i want to see if the due is actually five so i can use this particular debugger uh, here right oops just remove this guy so i have added a debugger and i'm going to save it and now if i try to run this again you can see that this time the debugger has been hit in here and now i get the context of do basically so now if i just put the do here you can see that i get a length of four one two three four and i can verify what's really happening behind the scene so this is exactly what i really require while i try to debug an application so if you use the debugger in the right position in the right place where you want to debug your application that makes a lot of sense for us so this code right now makes a lot of sense because i can see what's really happening and where i want to test so you cannot just randomly put a debugger somewhere within your code because even if the debugger hits that's exactly what's mentioned in the cypress documentation basically if you put the debugger in a place unnecessarily anywhere even if you hit the debugger it really doesn't really gives you any uh, information or any useful information for you to debugging right so that's exactly where the debugger plays a key role in the place that you use it. And the next question is, what is the real purpose of importing the application and why I'm really using this guy? So let's say I want to stop this particular debugger. I'm just gonna save that. And let's say I'm gonna stop this execution of the test. And if I want to modify the application behavior, like a developer, like how they do, I'm gonna go to the app and I'm gonna go to the courses and we have something called as course list component uh, dot ts file where you have this something called as get courses so the get courses is something which is responsible for getting all the courses for me within the uh, application and things of that nature so i can go to this particular uh, place and i can add one more course here which is going to be for cypress let's say something like this right and I'm going to save this guy. So once I save this, it is going to basically be like five courses, right? And I also want to add a debugger on the uh, component here. So I can just put a debugger here. And now if I go to the Cypress here, so now I have removed the debugger from the test code, but the debugger is currently sitting in the application. And since the Cypress runs on the same application loop, the debugger point of the application actually hits even in your, in your test code. So now if I run the test, what happens is you can see that this guy is actually coming from the application rather your test code itself. So that's exactly what we discussed in our slide that Cypress runs on the same run loop of the application. So once it runs the application, you can see that this particular debugger point has been hit. And now I can see what's really happening within this particular code so you can see that now the debugger is going to return me what's really going to happen so let's see and evaluate in the console you can see that it returns me like five objects and these five objects basically are these guys right so now we can see that it is is currently five instead of four and now if i just try to run the test you can see that this time the test has got passed so since we have like five courses this time and we expect our test to have the length of five as well and the test is currently passing so this is how you can perform a debugging operation within your test code or you can put the debugger within your application code and you can see that the same debug point is being hit within your cypress in two different area in two different context based on how you try to debug your application this is exactly how developer test their application during testing their ui both in real time world as well as during the testing operation in unit testing that's exactly what we can leverage the power in cypress as well which is really really cool so this is how you can do debugging operation in cypress in much easier and much greater fashion so you can leverage the same power of how your developer do 
the debugging operation of debugger in the console and also you can do the breakpoint you can do the watch you can use the call stack scopes breakpoint xhr breakpoint and dom breakpoint you can do all sort of jars here basically straight into your chrome browser using the developer tool in much easier fashion so once again thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day